Welcome to Animology, a podcast about language, the animal-related words and expressions we use every day, and how these words reflect and affect our relationship with animals. My name is Colleen Patrick Gaudreau. I'm your host. You can find me at ColleenPatrickGaudreau.com and on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And of course, be sure to subscribe to Animology on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're enjoying this podcast, all I ask is that you share it with others and leave ratings and reviews thanks to those who already have. Word of mouth is really the best way to increase Animology's listenership. And of course, supporting it is the best way to keep it going. You can go to patreon.com slash Colleen Patrick Gaudreau to leave a tip in the jar, or you can go directly to my website, ColleenPatrickGaudreau.com and click on the donate button. Today's episode is geographical place names with animal origins. If I asked you to name some cities and countries after animals, how many could you come up with? If you think about it for just a short time, you would probably be able to identify a few, at least obvious ones right away. Seriously, hit pause and just take a minute to think about it or write them down and then come back. I'll wait. So what did you come up with? If you're in the US, perhaps you thought right away, of Buffalo, New York. Perhaps you thought of Fly, Ohio, Mustang, Oklahoma, Sturgeon, Pennsylvania, Parrot, Georgia, Partridge, Kansas, Wolverine, Michigan, Porcupine, South Dakota, Beaver, Utah, Elk, Washington, Moose, Wyoming, Whitehorse, New Jersey, Dogtown, California, or Bumblebee, Arizona. In Canada, perhaps you thought about one of a gazillion place names named after animals. You've got Big Beaver in Saskatchewan. You've got Deer Lake in Newfoundland. You've got Eagle River in Ontario. There are so many named after, especially beaver. In the UK, perhaps you live in Weston under Lizard near Birmingham, Catworth in Cambridgeshire, or Dog Village in Devon. Wherever you're listening from, no doubt, you could pull a few names of towns or cities that are named after animals. And of course, I don't have the time. We don't have the time or the bandwidth or the storage space to name the thousands and thousands of geographical regions and features around the world named after animals, rivers, creeks, canyons, lakes, mountains, valleys, meadows, buttes, and gulches. Today, we're going to focus on cities, states, and countries whose names have animals. Today, we're going to focus mostly on cities and countries whose names have animals in their origins. And I mean, ones that are less obvious than the ones I named, less obvious than, say, Flamingo, Florida. I think you're going to be tickled. I think you're going to be surprised by place names whose animal origins are hiding deep, deep within. So are you ready? Let's start with one that you may have been able to figure out if you've listened to the animology episode called Zodiac, A Circle of Animals Literally. In it, I talk about the origin of the constellation, the origin of the word Capricorn, meaning horn of the goat. Corn in Capricorn, meaning horn and caper from Latin, meaning goat, from which we also get the words caprice, capricious, and an island in Italy named after goats, Capri. Capri is a beautiful island in the province of Naples that the Romans called Goat Island. However, it may be that another animal is named for the island because the exact etymology isn't terribly clear. It's possible that the name derives from the ancient Greeks, who, as far as written records show, were the first humans to populate this island. The Greek word kapros means wild boar, and fossils of wild boars have indeed been found. So perhaps the Greeks called this boar island and the Romans called it goat island. Either way, Capri qualifies as an animology. We get two for the price of one. And just as a fun aside, of course, Capri pants are ostensibly called such because they were first popular in Capri, which was emerging as a European holiday destination around the time these pants became popular, not unlike how Bermuda shorts got its name, or one that we're going to come to in a bit, the derby hat. Uh, So we've got a piece of clothing that is also technically an animology. And speaking of goats, of course, we have the Aegean Sea and Aegina, an island in the Aegean Sea. And that's from the Greek root for goat. A-I-G is the Greek root for goat. 
Now, you already know that the Galapagos Islands, a series of islands that are part of the Republic of Ecuador, are teeming with animals. But did you know that the name itself is an animology? The first confirmed visitors to the islands were the Spanish, although apparently when Bishop Tomas de Barlanga was washed up there in 1535 en route from Panama to Peru, he was not impressed saying that the islands were worthless and barren. Uh, But of course, it's teeming with life and diversity and ecosystems galore. However, the bishop's description of iguanas and sea lions and tortoises were decimated far and wide, and he was especially taken with the tortoises. The ones he saw were of the saddleback variety, and so he nicknamed them Galapagos after a certain type of saddleback turtle popular during that era, prevalent during that era. This was soon the name that became associated with the islands, And when Flemish map maker Abraham Artelius published his atlas in 1570, he referred to the islands as Insule de los Galapagos, or Islands of the Saddlebacks. And the islands have been referred to as Galapagos ever since. There are several theories about the origin of the name Panama, as in the Central American country. Some say it was named after a commonly found species of tree, the Panama tree. Others say that the first settlers arrived in Panama in August when butterflies are in abundance, and that the name Panama means many butterflies in an indigenous language. So we have animals uh, in our origin story. We have an animology from that, but we also have a second animology origin story. And that is the theory that a fishing village and its nearby beach bore the name Panama, which meant an abundance of fish. Taking all of that into account, Panamanians believe in general that the word Panama means abundance of fish, trees, and butterflies, which is the most diplomatic answer to a mystery that may never be solved. But I love that they're just like, well, let's just say it's all of those things. And for our purposes, it gives us two animologies, butterflies and fish for the price of one. Panama. A Caribbean island that forms part of Haiti is Tortuga, uh, or Tortuga Island. The Spaniards were the first Europeans to land on this island in 1492 during the first voyage of Christopher Columbus, who was responsible for naming it such because its shape reminded him of a turtle's shell, a turtle's back. And turtle is Tortuga in Spanish. The South American country of Uruguay, or Uruguay, however you choose to say it, I say Uruguay, gets its name from the Uruguay River. The word Uruguay is from the local Indian language, Guarani, uh, which is the name of the language. And in that language, Uruguay means bird river or river of painted birds. The name could also refer to a river snail that was once plentiful in the water, uh, Uruguay, Either way, we have our animology and possibly, again, two for the price of one, depending on which theory you want to listen to. But Uruguay, bird, river, or river of birds, or river snail. Moving from Central America and South America to Central Africa, and from Spanish to, in this case, Portuguese, we have a word for a place that means shrimp river because of the abundance of these crustaceans, specifically ghost shrimp, noted by Portuguese sailors who reached the coast of Cameroon in 1472. Because of all the shrimp they saw in the Huari River, they named it Rio dos Camaroes, which means shrimp river. Camaroes, meaning shrimp, Camaroes becoming Cameroon in English. Staying on the African continent in the country Ghana, we have the capital city Accra, which is derived from an Akan word meaning ants. Accra means ants. It's a reference to the numerous ant hills seen in the countryside around Accra. The word and its meaning also shifted to take on kind of more of a political shade in reference to the metaphorical allusion to ants as soldiers making up a strong army. So that's where ants also play a role in a metaphorical sense, but in a literal sense, Accra means 
ants. In the West African country Mali, Bamako is the capital city and the largest city, and its name comes from the Bambara word, meaning crocodile tail or crocodile back or river of crocodiles. Basically, crocodile. Bamako means crocodile, which is why it's an animology. The capital city of the East African country Uganda is Kampala, and its name is derived from the Luganda word for Impala. So Kampala comes from a Luganda word for Impala, medium-sized antelope who live in southern Africa and eastern Africa. We saw a gazillion uh, Impala. They're beautiful uh, little antelope uh, when we were in Botswana recently. So Kampala means Impala in the Ugandan language, Luganda. Love that. Sierra Leone is a West African nation that literally means lion mountains. If you said it with the proper Italian pronunciation, of course, it would be Sierra Leone, but we say Sierra Leone. Uh, and it's been called such since 1462 when the Portuguese, not the Italians, but the Portuguese explorer Pedro de Sintra, sailing down the West African coast, saw the tall mountains rising from what is now Freetown, the Freetown Peninsula, and named the area Serra de Leo because of the shape formed by the hills surrounding the harbor. The Italian rendering of this geographic formation is Sierra Leone, thus the Italian rather than the Portuguese name. And it's been, of course, anglicized because we just say Sierra Leone, or at least I do. Uh, before we leave Africa, I give you Khartoum, the capital city of Sudan in northeastern Africa, located at the confluence. If you look at a map, you could see that it's located uh, just at the confluence of the Blue Nile River and the White Nile River. Uh, the English word Khartoum comes from Al Khartoum, an Arabic word meaning elephant trunk because the shape of the rivers as they come together resembles an elephant trunk. In the United Arab Emirates, we have its capital, Abu Dhabi, translated literally from Arabic to mean father of the deer or father of the gazelle, possibly named for this antelope species that inhabited the area. According to historians, some Bedouin the Arabic-speaking nomadic peoples of the Middle Eastern deserts may have called the city not Abu Dhabi, but Um Dhabi, which means mother of deer. So, of course, you have Dhabi meaning deer, and Abu Dhabi means father of the deer. Um Dhabi means mother of the deer, but we've been saying Abu Dhabi uh, for at least 300 years, father of the deer. Kosovo, uh, the landlocked area in the central Balkan peninsula in southeastern Europe that declared independence from Serbia in 2008 as the Republic of Kosovo, is an animology. Although the territory is disputed, one thing that is not is its animal origins. Kosovo means land of blackbirds, kos being a Serbian term for blackbird. Moving to the United States, this First one is probably not a town you've heard of, unless you follow me on social media and watch very carefully. But I mentioned this town name as an homage to my husband, who's from the town of Randolph in New Jersey. And even though you may never heard of that town, you will most certainly heard of the name Randolph. We're going to do an entire episode on proper names for people and all of their etymologies, which is fascinating. So Randolph, of course, you've heard of as a masculine proper name. And either way, Randolph is a combination of the Germanic element Rand, R-A-N-D, meaning shield, protector, shield rim, and the word wolf, W-U-L-F, in this case, meaning wolf, the lupine animal. It basically means protector. Randolph means protector, as in wolves being great protectors of their own packs, of their own families. And Ralph has a similar origin story, but we're going to talk about Ralph when we talk about proper names from animals. But uh, Randolph, New Jersey, shout out to my husband's hometown, is an animology. Now, I already mentioned Fly, Ohio in the United States, but we have some other place names named after a flying insect we know well called the fly. I said I wasn't going to focus on geographical features as much as geographical place names like cities and countries, but 
bear with me because we do have a Mosca Pass, a mountain pass in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. And we have Ponte Mosca, a historic bridge in Turin in a region in Piedmont, Italy. But as for towns, we do have a town called Mosca, M-O-S-C-A. It's an unincorporated community in Alamosa County, Colorado. And it was named for the nearby Mosca Pass, but it is a town, so I'm keeping with my theme. And it was named for for the Spanish explorer Luis de Moscoso Alvarado. And even though Mosca was named for a person, his name comes from the Latin word musca, meaning fly, as in the insect. Incidentally, we will come back to this root in another episode because we have many English words derived from this insect and from this Latin root musca, uh, including, I'll give you a little preview, wait for it, musket and mosquito. The word musket, as in a firearm for infantry, later replaced in combat by the rifle, came to English from the Middle French word mousquet. So you've got musket from mousquet. And of course, in that word, you can most likely detect the word mosquito, which comes from the same root going farther back, even both of them go farther back. Muska goes farther back uh, to the Proto-Indo-European root mu, mu, meaning gnat or fly. So we'll come back to all the words that have uh, insects and fly in particular in their origins. Staying in the U.S., we've got Coney Island in New York, a seaside resort town famous for its boardwalk and amusement park. Now, there isn't a clear consensus on how the island got its name, but the most popular theory is that it comes from an old spelling of the Dutch word for rabbit, Conan, C-O-N-Y-N, because ostensibly there was a large population of wild rabbits when the Dutch settlers arrived there, giving it the name Rabbit Island. The story then goes that the name was anglicized to Coney Island after the English took over the colony in 1664, Coney being the English version of the word rabbit. So that's the theory. That's the best we have right now. First Dutch, then English uh, for Coney for the word rabbit. The name Alcatraz, as in the island in the San Francisco Bay, famous mostly for its prison, means pelican. The first Spaniard to discover the island was Juan Manuel de Ayala in 1775, who named the island La Isla de los Alcatraces, which translates to the island of the pelicans, which comes from the archaic Spanish word Alcatraz, meaning pelican, but which was itself borrowed, Alcatraz was borrowed originally from Arabic, uh, meaning sea eagle. So it meant sea eagle in Arabic, then pelican in Spanish. And it's fitting that the word Alcatraz means pelican. The island now, especially with the prison closed down, and of course you can tour the prison, which is, I have to say, I've done it a couple times, of course, when people come and visit. It seems like such a cliche thing to do, but it really is a fascinating history. And then, of course, there's a lot of history of it being used by uh, different groups for protests, especially Native Americans during the 70s. And now it's a bird sanctuary. So it's very fitting that its original name means pelican, probably birds that would have been seen at the time, you know, many centuries ago, and who, of course, are still there, and many, many other bird species. So it's a bird sanctuary. And if you're interested in birding, you can, you can go there and tour the island from that perspective, not just for the prison. Los Gatos. Los Gatos is a Spanish word through and through, but at this point, it is the anglicized name of a really cute town near me in Northern California in the foothills of the Santa Cruz Mountains. Of course, Los Gatos is Spanish for the cats, though as with so many anglicized words here in California, it's not pronounced Los Gatos. It's pronounced Los Gatos, like that's how it's pronounced here. And we have a lot of anglicized names like that that have lost their proper Spanish pronunciation. It's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. You have a town that's spelled San, S-A-N, and then the second word is R-A-F as in Frank, A-E-L, which should be pronounced San Rafael, but it's pronounced San Rafael. That's how we pronounce it here. It's San Rafael. Vallejo is another town, of which, of course, technically should be pronounced Vallejo. Uh, so just a little bit of a pet peeve. But um, Los Gatos means, uh, of course, the cats, pronounced Los Gatos. And it derives from the 1839 Alta California land grant that encompassed the area 
which at the time was called La Riconada de los Gatos, which means cat's corner. And the cats in this situation refer to the cougars, mountain lions, and the bobcats, who are indigenous to the foothills in which the town is located. So the first settlers, a Spanish family arriving in 1839, would have heard the mountain lions or the cougars uh, while scouting for a homestead in the area. And of course, it also meant that water couldn't be far away hearing these animals. And I believe that indeed the Los Gatos, Los Gatos Creek, was named first and then the region. So there we have it, the cats, the cats, which is a town I should obviously move to. That would be pretty awesome because of my affinity for cats that I live in a place called Los Gatos. Boca Raton is the name of a town in Southern Florida. Now, technically the town is named after a navigational term, but that navigational term is is named after an animal. So I am counting Boca Raton as an animology. Here's the deal. Some people think that the name Boca Raton simply means mouse's mouth or the mouth of a mouse, M-O-U-S-E, uh, because you have the Spanish words Boca for mouth and Roton for mouse, R-A-T-O-N. It's not rat. <laughs> and it looks like rat, R-A-T-O-N. Raton is actually mouse. Uh, rat is actually rata. But that's only part of the story. Boca de ratones is a Spanish navigational term that appeared on early maps and referred to hidden sharp pointed rocks that gnawed uh, or fretted ship's cables, hence rat's mouth, or like I said, more accurately, mouse's mouth, even though that doesn't seem to have the bite, no pun intended, that rat's mouth has, but there it is. Because that term, that navigational term was named after as if rats were biting, gnawing at the ship's cables, they named that inlet, that jagged inlet, Boca de Rotones. Um, And in that case, Ratones, meaning m- mice, ultimately is an animology. So in my book, Boca Raton is an animology. In Greek mythology, a phoenix is a long-lived bird that is cyclically regenerated or reborn, associated with the sun. A phoenix obtains new life by arising from the ashes of its predecessor. Phoenix, Arizona, considered the Valley of the Sun, appears to be named after this bird who is featured on the city's seal as well as its flag. So even though it's a mythical creature, it is a bird and we're counting it as an animology. Now, before we move on to the United Kingdom, I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of our listeners and all of our listener sponsors, all of you who are making this podcast possible. This podcast exists because of you. So thank you to everyone who listens and subscribes and spreads the word and supports Animology, including all of our Platinum supporters. Morgan Hall, thank you. David Cabrera and Alexander Gray, Michal Stone, Tim Anderson, Jennifer Ellis and Ben Ellis, Sylvie Raquel, Gwen Mayo, Ulrich, and Renee Marinkovich. Remember, supporters at $10 and above receive written transcripts to every Food for Thought episode and every Animology episode. Food for Thought is my other podcast. So if you're getting anything out of either podcast or my work in general, please consider becoming a supporter today. Visit patreon.com slash Colleen Patrick Goudreau or just visit ColleenPatrickGoudreau.com and click on the donate button. Thank you. Moving to the United Kingdom, we have York, a city in Yorkshire County in Northern England, one of my favorite places, home to the magnificent cathedral York Minster. When the Romans occupied the area from about 71 to about 400, uh, of course, this is AD, uh, it was known as Aboricum, which most likely meant yew tree place, like Y-E-W as in yew tree. Then it was altered into Old English, Eophorwick, from the word-forming elements Eophor, meaning wild boar, and wick, meaning outlying settlement. So we have boar settlement, or wild boar town, in Eophorwick. And this name was then taken over by the Scandinavian settlers in the area hundreds of years later, who altered it to Eorvik and eventually York in which form it finally settled by the 13th century York, meaning place of wild boars. 
Derby is a city in the south of England. It was called Derventillo by the Romans who settled this town. And it's possible the word Derby is a corruption of that original Roman name. But when the Vikings came, they named it, I'm not going to even try to pronounce it in Old Norse, uh, they named it something that was recorded in Old English as Derby, meaning village of the deer. Let me spell it for you, D-E-O-R-A-B-Y, Derby. And if you remember from previous etymology episodes, deor is the old English word that at the time would have meant wild animals in general. It meant deer, deor meant deer, but it would have referred to wild animals in general, not simply the ungulates we love to see in our backyards. It was later narrowed to that meaning, the word deer, but derby or derby would have meant village of the deer, which would have essentially meant village of a variety of wild animals. And then, of course, I mentioned earlier that we have a derby hat. We have derbies in quite a few of our common phrases and and, and words in our vocabulary. We have derby the hat that resembles a bowler. It's kind of bowler hat. Derby has become a general term for type of sporting competition as in a roller derby or a soapbox derby or a demolition derby. So we see derby in other ways, but it originally meant place of the deer. Next in the UK, we have Hertford. Uh, Obviously, this is the name of a number of places, but the UK Hertford would have been the first, which means the place where the deer or heart crossed the ford. I imagine in Old English, it would have been pronounced Hertford. And a ford, of course, is a shallow body of water or the shallow part of a body of water that makes crossing possible. So Hartford, Hartford is the ford where the hearts cross. Heart referred to a grown stag. Remember, we've already talked a couple times in previous episodes that heart, H-A-R-T, is the Old English word for a grown stag, distinct from the hind, the Old English word for adult female deer. And you've heard of heart and hind. So heart was the male and hind was the female. So Hartford, Hartford is the ford where the hearts cross. And the earliest reference to the town appears in the Ecclesiastical History of the English People by Bede in 731. That's how far back that word and that place goes. Of course, we have the modified Hartford, as in Hartford, Connecticut. Of course, Hartford and Hartford are in many places around the world in the UK and the US, but there's a well-known one in Connecticut, Hartford, Connecticut, the insurance company capital of the world. One of the oldest cities actually in the US, founded in 1635. It was originally called Newtown, interestingly, but it was changed to Hartford just a couple years after its founding uh, in 1637 in honor of Hertford, England, the hometown of Samuel Stone, who was one of the founders of this of this town. So we've got Hartford, we've got Hertford, and of course we have another famous town in southern England named for another type of animal who crossed the ford. We have Oxford. The university town in southern England comes from the old English word oxenaford, also oxenaford from the early 10th century, also a very old word meaning literally the ford where the oxen cross. And of course, oxen is one of those fun words, fun bit of trivia. It's one of the few words we still have left over that has the old plural form. Of course, we see that in children, we see it in brethren, and we see it in oxen. Otherwise, we have very, very few words in the English language that retained that en plural form. Otherwise, today we would say oxes. Another town in southern England has Old English animal roots, Ramsgate. It's a seaside town in southeast England in Kent, and you'll never guess what Ramsgate means. Actually, you might be surprised to find out that the earliest references to Ramsgate come from about 1225 from Anglo-Saxon, Raefensgate. So in Anglo-Saxon, that would be spelled H-R-A-E-F-N, Raefens. Get G E A T meaning Raven's Gate. Get meaning gate or gap, and Raven meaning Raven. Therefore, Raven's Gate is Gate of the Raven. And later it was, and later it was rendered to Ramas Gate, morphing into Rams Gate. So it doesn't mean the gate that Rams pass through. It actually has ravens as the foundation of its word, and of course that gives us. Our animology. Ramsgate means Ravensgate. 
staying in Europe, but moving to the continent, we have the Canary Islands, an archipelago that is part of Spain. Can you guess, you'll never guess, you'll never guess what the Canary in Canary Islands refers to. Canaries, right? Wrong. Although it may seem logical, like our Ramsgate, the islands are actually not named for the little yellow bird commonly known as the Canary Rather, the birds are named after the islands because the wild canaries originated here who were then bred in captivity starting in the 17th century. So we have domesticated canaries, but canaries are named after the Canary Islands. But what does that mean for the name of our islands? The Canary Islands get their name from a Latin term. I know you're getting it. I know you're getting it. Insula Canaria, which means Island of the Dogs. Remember, canis means dog in Latin. Ostensibly, the ancient Romans who first visited the islands gave them this name, and the dog remains on the coat of arms of the Canary Islands, as well as on their flag. Moving north, we have the Faroe Islands, or Faroese, at the ends of the North Sea, which literally means sheep islands. From Faroese foriar, from for, which means ship, plus oi, meaning island. So you have sheep island. So basically when we say Faroe Islands, we're being redundant because Faroe means sheep island. So when we say Faroe Islands, we're saying sheep island islands. But there you have it, sheep, sheep islands. Singapore in Southeast Asia gets its name from Sanskrit, Simhapuram, meaning lion city. From Simha, lion, and Purim, city. The name is most likely metaphorical or given because of admiration for lions, but not because lions frequented this island. In fact, no lions are in Singapore and they never have been. But still, it's common to refer to Singapore as the lion city. And lions are included in many of the nation's symbols, such as in its coat of arms. And there you have it, geographical place names inspired by animals. There are a million more if you count all those geographical features, and their origins will be really obvious to you. But I hope you enjoyed digging deeper into place names you've heard of, but never knew were inspired by our animal brethren. There are many things separating us around the world. But one thing we all share, no matter where we hail from or what language we speak, is our deep connection to and our affinity for other animals. And that's evident in the names of countries and cities all around the world for the animals. This is Colleen patrick Gaudreau. Thanks for listening to Animology, changing the way we talk and think about animals.